In this video, you will learn about naming dynamic actions and controlling action execution with debounce and throttle in Apex 22.2. In this Apex application, we have a simple page containing a search item as well as a cards region that displays some movie data based on the search query. We already have a dynamic action on the P2 search page item, which we will use to trigger a refresh of the results region every time a user types in the search bar. The execution property group of dynamic actions has been updated to include a type, which by default is set to immediate. We'll come back to this, but for now, any actions associated with this dynamic action will fire immediately when the event is triggered. Let's create a true action, and we'll set the action property to refresh. In Apex 22.2, it's now possible to also give the action of a dynamic action a name. This is optional, and by default the name is the value of the action, but here let's name the action refresh results region. This is helpful to make it clear what this action does, especially if we were to have multiple refresh actions here. We'll set the affected element selection type to region and select the results region, which is the cards region that displays the movies. Now let's save and run the page so that we can see how this search functionality works. When we begin typing a search query in, we see the results of the movies that, with titles that match this query. While this works, there's a lot of flashing on the screen because the movie cards are refreshing and returning new results with each key release. And if we had a ton of data or were using a REST data source for the cards region, we could end up making a lot of really expensive requests. It would be much better if the search didn't happen until we are done typing for a certain amount of time. This is where the new debounce and throttle execution types come in. Back in Page Designer, we're going to click on the search movie's dynamic action and take a look at the execution property group. As mentioned earlier, the type property is currently set to immediate. Along with immediate, there are the debounce and throttle options. Debounce is helpful for what we want to do now, which is execute an action one time after a specified delay and don't do anything else. Throttle is very similar, but rather than executing an action just once after a delay, it'll execute immediately, then delay, and then continue in intervals as long as an event continues to fire. Throttle would be useful in this example if we still wanted to update the search results while typing, but not do so every time the event fires. After selecting debounce, the time and immediate properties become available. Time determines how long the delay will be, and immediate specifies whether the action executes before or after the delay. Let's use 400 milliseconds as the time delay, which is just under half a second. This means that after triggering the key release event, no action will be fired until 400 milliseconds have passed with no new events getting triggered. Let's save and run this page, and if we start typing in the search bar, we now see that no results are shown until the typing stops. Every time the search movie's dynamic action is triggered by the key release, the 400 millisecond delay begins and the refresh results region action won't fire until after those 400 milliseconds. However, that delay gets reset with every new event so the actual refresh of the movie results doesn't take place until after the last key release event. This is just one example of the many ways in which you can use debounce and throttle. With these enhancements to naming and executing dynamic actions, there's a whole new level of control over what you can do with dynamic actions.